Today we're going to be going over what I believe to be the best offense in Madden 25, just after some of the things we've heard and seen about the beta, as well as just coming to some of the ways that I anticipate next-gen Madden 25 playing, as well as the switch stick feature. wanted to drop this video for you guys. This is kind of what I'm going to anticipate and I'm going to hypothesize is going to be the best offense in Madden 25. Now, we've got two different variations of offenses we're going to be talking about. If you want to get all of my stuff, all my offensive and defensive ebooks for both college football and for Madden, everything is available at my school.com page, school.com slash Cody Ballard for just $10. You get access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as a more fleshed out variation of what I'm about to show you. Now, the way we're going to set this up, if you are playing Mutt, if you're in regs, it's very simple. Just use live playbooks. Uh, but if you're in Mutt, you're going to need to do this. Go into your settings here in the regular menu. Choose Offensive Playbook, Chicago Bears, and then turn on NFL Live Playbooks. This is then going to allow you to go into Ultimate Team and be able to have access to this playbook. In case you forgot my Freeform settings, Placement and Accuracy, Freeform Reticle Max Distance is going to be on Near, and Freeform Reticle Speed is going to be on 20 out of 20. One other quick pro tip for you guys is to make sure Coin Toss first first choice is kick this is just going to allow you the best clocking you can possibly get and if you go all the way down here on this menu turn off dynamic camera effects this will make sure that your screen is not shaking as you can see in the ultimate team kind of strategy menu here we have the chicago bears playbook enabled real quick if you're in cfm or regs all you have to do is turn nfl live playbooks on and you'll be able to access it very very simply but the bears playbook is the best way to get all the formations you're going to need for this offense so the main formations that we're going to be going over in this little kind of mini ebook is going to be the bunch strong offset formation and the tight slots halfback weak formation. There are some other supplemental formations we'll be talking about maybe for a little mini red zone schemes such as Y off trips weak, which I think is very underrated in this playbook, as well as bunch wide. We also dropped full guides on doubles, gun doubles or gun doubles halfback weak, normal Y off close and tight Y off on the channel. So you guys can check that stuff out if you want to mix that stuff in. For the audibles for this offense, what I like to do is we're going to have the play, um, if I can find it, dagger. We're going to then come over to bunch wide, and we're going to set branch return. We're going to set dig return. We have verticals, and then the last one is kind of up to you. You can set this drive wide corner if you want to. You can set seam divide. I think Z spot is worth uh, kind of setting. Or a run play, it's really up to you what you want to do. Cross screen. Actually, you know what? We're going to set cross screen just with the latest screen meta, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We also have a full ebook on tight open. So the cool part is this. What's cool about this playbook is it literally has everything that you need. It has the best formations in the game. Now, from tight tots halfback week, we're going to set the play bench, and we're going to set the play post wheel drag. If you want to have a run, then don't use the play bench, and you could put the read option or the inside zone in that, in that slot. All right, and then why off trips week? What we're going to do here is we're going to have the motion, uh, motion slant spot, RPO glance bubble, high low dig, and then the motion halfback swing. These are the main plays uh, for this offense in terms of how we're going to utilize it. And our base play that we're going to be coming out in 90% of the time is corner strike. Situationally, you can come out in the play flood. You can come out in the play read option or the slip screen. Just depends. But for the most part, we're going to be coming out in corner strike. And we're pretty much always going to be having our bunch to the wide side of the field. That's the way this offense works best. Okay, we're going to be going over our base kind of offense here. These are the main plays. We're not going to try to overcomplicate things. I'm just going to try to give you the best stuff. You'll find that by the end of this, you're going to have a lot of really good setups that is going to be very effective. Now, again, if you want like the next level of this stuff, check out the school page. That'll be linked in the description below. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is what's known as a double corner. If you are getting any kind of base aligned dollar or base aligned 6-1, basically if they're showing you a zone coverage look, this is probably the best zone beater in the entire game. Now, what we're going to do to set this play up is we are just going to slot apprentice corner route our slot receiver, streak our tight end, drag our solo receiver, and then a couple different options. If you are feeling like you are getting pressured, go ahead and block your running back. But what I like to do is put my running back on a table route or a flat route to the right side so that I have a flat read. Essentially, what we're looking for here is we're going to, at the very quick snap of the ball, we're going to peek this tight end, and then we're going to look to this drag. And then if neither one of those quick reads are open, 
Then we're going to come back and work this high-low between the corner routes and the table route. So we look the middle, no field, no open, no open there. And then we see that the corner route is going to be, the short corner route is going to be open against cover four. Now that short corner route is going to get open against cover four. It's also going to get open against cover three. I'm going to show you one of the most popular ways that people are going to, as I get crazy screamed at, low-key dime rush might, or dime dollar three two mug might be the meta defense next year because of the way that these ends, the spacing you get with these defensive ends, actually kind of crazy. But let me show this to you real quick. Let me get that guy out. Let me get that blitzer out. So, again, what you'll see here, same basic idea. And you see that this short corner route is going to get open. Okay? Now, what's going to happen is a lot of times, uh, ultimately, you're going to get a couple of different coverages. There's only a couple of different coverages that can really guard this. The first thing they're going to try to do is they're going to back off the slot corner, and they're going to shade their coverage over the top to try to, to utilize cloud flats to be able to take this away. So, again, our first read here on this left side, not really open. What you see is this running back tech or table route. This is why we love to put that running back on a quick table route to the flat because it really eliminates their ability to just sit in that adjustment. You're going to get an easy 10 yards with angry runs this year. It's really hard to play that. Another thing they're going to try to do if they want to stay in a press alignment is you're going to see more of a cover two look like something like this. So if they do give you this cover two look, what I want you to do is I want you to look at that deeper corner route. So you're going to see here, all those quick reads are taken away, but we sit back in the pocket for just a second, and you see that this is going to be wide open over the top. Now, the only way that they can really defend that specific route is by utilizing what's known as a cover three cloud. So the way we're going to showcase this is I'm going to try to just really exaggerate this deep half because I don't actually have the outside thirds package on. But you should be able to see this. Let me actually see if I do have that. I don't think I do. Yeah. Okay, I don't. So you see this is kind of what it looks like. And again, typically they get a vertical hook here. And then this is going to be the user more times than not. So what this is going to do is you still are going to be able to hit your running back. And you're still going to be able to hit your tight end on this. So you see here that if I wait on this, you see how that cloud has to go to that deeper corner, that short corner. And then I'm able to hit the table route. Now, another tactic that a lot of people like to do that is really popular, and I, I did want to cover this as well, is, and this is a super situational tactic, but a lot of times, sometimes what they'll end up doing is they'll actually man this guy up on the circle receiver because he's oftentimes on that short corner route, the RPO bubble, the verticals, which we're going to get to. So if they're starting to do an adjustment sequence like this and, and, and maybe using it over in here now, what you want to do is where you want to attack. Well, you can still attack all that space over there on the right side. The only thing we need to do is just have a different guy on the short corner. So there's a couple different ways to basically accomplish this. But the simplest way to do this would be to just put the tight end on the short corner, put the slot receiver on the, uh, put the, slot receiver on the deeper corner, and then streak that outside receiver. And it's the same exact concept. It's just changing who's on what route. And what you'll see is that this tight end now gives you the ability to run that short corner concept. So if they're just manning up the circle receiver, this is a great little counter to that. Now, the next thing that I want to go over is those are the main things that they can do to stop your number one play, your power play. Now, I also wanted to explain what happens if they blitz you real quick. So, like, let's say they're setting up the A-gap, and I know that this might not work. But this is an example of kind of the A-gap blitz. And if we just simply crashed our right, line to the right, we might actually get this thing to, to hum. But let's say they're usering here. So what they're typically going to do is they're going to have to climb up with that tight end quick. And they're going to have to kind of go over there. Okay. So what you're able to do here is, and, and what I would do from a protection perspective is I would slide right. Off rip, we're just looking right here, and we're trying to take that quick read. If there is no defender in that zone, that is going to be open. So what is the best way that they can take that away? Again, we're going to try to do some critical thinking here to kind of help explain why this is probably a top two or three play in the game. So the best thing that they can do is they can put this guy in a yellow zone and shade underneath. Now, typically... What that means is you're really limited with the zones you can put on this left side. If you're going to get pressure, it's going to be coming from the slot and the A-gap blitzer. 
So as you think about this, if they do have a hard flat, this is probably the best way to defend this. But their user is going to go from the tight end, and then he's going to have to make a decision. Normally, he's going to go to that short corner route. Um, but I'll show you kind of what happens if he stays in the middle of the field. So if he decides to stay in the middle of the field here, then what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of be patient with this and try to hit your short corner. It's a tight throw, and this is really good defense for double corner with the proper user if they use it properly, but it's not. It's going to leave them vulnerable to some other things. Okay, so we kind of established that you know it's they're going to have to use her the corner route. So let's say they decide, okay, we're going to just essentially full sell and we're going to run to that corner route on the right side. Typically, this is going to come with a hard flat here on the side, and then you might get you know some variation of what you see right here. Okay, this is pretty standard for how they would adjust to this. So if that's what they end up doing, then what you're going to want to what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to kind of wait and try to throw this right there and essentially try to avoid the KO. So that's the best possible defense for double corner. Those are those couple things that I showed you in our next play setup. We're going to show you how to attack that adjustment. Real quick, before we go too much farther, I did want to cover cover three cloud. I actually found it here in the dime rush fa uh, formation and just kind of show you how this plays, this route combination. So again, you know, the front's a little different, but it's gonna essentially play out the same way. So if you just think about this practically, this is typically gonna be a cloud. They're very rarely gonna hard flat on that right side, and if they do, your short corner is gonna get open. This is oftentimes gonna be a vertical hook, and then you're gonna have the user right in here. Now, a couple different things that they could do on the left side. Typically, they'll send four. Um, for our purposes in the breakdown, I'm going to spy this guy. But oftentimes, they will send four. If they don't, this guy's going to be on his own on the left side of the screen. Okay, So this is, again, just kind of a general overview of what's going to happen. So if you think about where's their user going to be here, what's their user responsibility? Well, if they send four, their user has to use her in the middle of the field. If they send three, then their user can have a little bit more freedom to kind of take this tight end vertically. Okay. But let's assume they're sending four, and that user is going to jump kind of to the left side. What you'll see is that this, this third really gets out of the way, and you can throw this tight end up the seam and just possession catch it against the coverage. So you're, you're still going to have – and let's look at replay here real quick. I'll just show you. So you see how this kind of goes through. So as you see right here, we have – you can try to fit this in here, and, and often – and sometimes you actually can – but really the safe read is just check it down to your running back and take your 10 yards, okay? And then I did want to show if they do hard flat, which is actually a true cover three cloud in terms of Madden and how Madden's going to view it. If they do hard flat, then what you're going to be able to do here is you're just going to throw this short corner to the sideline. And we know that those possession catches this year are really good on the sideline. Okay, so the way that I teach Madden is I'm trying to be as systematic as possible with my approach. And I think it's really important to understand what beats you and why it beats you or what guards your number one play so that your number two play will attack different space. All right. Our number two play in this system and this offense is going to be the play Durham, which we're going to be going over right now. So Durham, really, really good play. And again, the whole purpose of this play is to be the great counter to corner strike. Cool part about this, and I think it's very underrated about this formation, it looks exactly the same. The plays look exactly the same. The hot routes are almost the same in terms of numbers and speed and pace, okay? So what stops our number one play, right? If you just think about it, what's the best things, that, that what are some of the things, the best ways uh, in which they stop it? So one of the best things that they can do to defend our main offense here is by sending five at us and by putting this guy in a hook curl and shading underneath. Essentially, this defense right here does a decent job against our main play, provided that they get a lot of pressure quickly. What this combo that we're going to show you at a Durham is going to do is it's going to really it's going to really put a lot of stress on this in particular adjustment and really in particular the user. If the user runs to the running back, we're going to have the whole middle of the field open. If the user kind of sits in the middle of the field and isn't really like super, you know, dead set on running to the running back, 
then we're going to have other routes open as well. Okay, so first things first, we're going to show you him kind of running at the running back. And again, same protection. We're just simply going to slide right. And then we're going to put our slot receiver on a slot apprentice post. Our tight end is going to be on a drag. And our running back is going to be on a streak. Now, our first read is always going to be this quick flat to the right side. If we see those defenders back off or leave that space, we're going to throw that. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But this is probably the best defense they're going to be able to play against this. And double corner, like this, this, this defense does okay against both of those adjustments. So, again, we're mainly reading the user here. And essentially, if the user runs the running back, then we want to work the high-low read between our slot post and our tight end. So you see, they go to the running back, and we're just going to take this high-low read. Now, right there, we got they got really good pressure really quickly, and that is that's why I say this is one of the better ways to really counter a lot of what we're trying to do is send pressure because we're sending five out. There are ways to counter this blitz, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. But in general, what's the right read here? If they run to the running back, which 90% of the time they do, and we're giving just a second, just step to the right a little bit, you can throw. And, of course, collect them. Some, somehow I'm getting defensive tackle leg out of this formation. This formation might be glitched. But you can throw this, um, this other route here. Let me show you. And I might have to call the blitz off for just a second. But essentially your post or your tight end should be open here. So I see, oh, okay, I got a step here. And then you see here I can throw this tight end drag. Okay. Very simple. It's a very simple read, but it's very, very important to be able to make it. Now, another really popular way that people like to adjust out of this is they're going to send four and try to get this guy to come through the A-gap. But what they're going to be able to do now is they're going to be able to shade that yellow underneath and have a hard flat to defend the tight end route, and then their user is going to take the running back. In this scenario, the main uh, what we're going to be able to do, provided we are able to pick up this blitz, is we're going to be able to step to the right for just a second, and we're really looking for this post, as you see right there, that high-low read on the left side. So if we think about this schematically, what are the – what are the what are the op or the vulnerabilities to this play? Another defense that we we see a lot is essentially a double flat to the right side. So they'll cloud flat this guy, they'll hard flat this guy, and then they'll deep half over the top of this. It might even outside third this guy to take away double corners. Okay. While this is a really good adjustment, they are still isolating themselves on the back end of the defense. And so again, if we just look at this defense, even if this is a drop eight situation. The user is going to have to run to the running back, and if the user runs to the running back, you're almost always going to have your slot post. So you see here, just kind of be patient on this. And I have some crazy D-line abilities, so they're going to go nuts. But you see this guy is wide open. Okay, We're high-low on the left side. So if you think about it, our power play really created a nice high-low read on the right side. And our counter play is going to create a high-low read on the left side with a little bit of a high-low read in the middle of the field to put some stress on the user. So another thing that was really popular in terms of how people would want to play defense is they might want to back this guy off and whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Back off this guy and they'll play like a cloud. Okay. So this is another very popular strategy. If they were to do this, a lot of times they end up going with some kind of defense like what you see here. And this is a pretty decent defense. The problem with this is that it's going to leave the wheel route open off the snap which way you always want to look at this. What I like to do this year, you won't need to do this next year, I'm pretty sure, is high point past this. But essentially just throw this out here, take your easy read, juke inside. A lot of times you're going to get easy yardage that way. So that is also really good for different types of blitzes um, that you might see. You know, For example, if they were to do something like this on the right side with a cloud, maybe that cloud's 30-yard 30, 30 zone drop. A lot of different things that you could see, but essentially if they're not playing hard flats to the to the bunch strong side, we're going to be able to manipulate them. Okay, We're going to be able to take our easy read to the circle receiver. Now, another thing that a lot of people like to do is they love to man this player up. Okay, So there's some ways in which we can kind of manipulate this adjustment as well. Um, and essentially what we're going to be doing is this is where 
we're putting a lot of stress on the user. So a lot of times what will happen is the user will, will stay down uh, in the middle of the field. So if the user stays down on the running back route, then this is simple. So look that way. No, he stays to the running back. And then we just take that read right there. Now let's say eventually what's going to start to occur, if whether this is a hard flat to the right side or a man up, this user is going to take the slot receiver across the middle of the formation. When that occurs, you're going to be able to take your running back and throw him right before he gets to that deep quarter zone right there on the right-hand side. So these plays complement one another really well because essentially you can't play the same defense. Let me go over a couple of the other defenses that we did talk about them playing. So one of them was essentially a cover three cloud with a cloud flat here. They would then need to hard flat or they wouldn't be able to stop the running back. So again, who are we putting in conflict? We're putting the user in a significant amount of conflict. So as you see here, user can't be right. He chooses that, I throw that route, right? And right there, I gotta wait on him a little bit, but that's where I would throw the ball, okay? On the left-hand side, another thing that is starting to become very popular is essentially a some type of cover two on the left side or a cloud flat. So you're gonna get a cloud flat from this guy here, you're gonna get a hard flat, and they're gonna really kinda essentially try to bait you into throwing this slot post. So this is kinda what the defense looks like. So we have a double flat to the right side. And essentially what you would wanna do here is, oh, that guy's backing up on the left side, so I wanna check down on my tight end and take my easy read underneath. So this is Durham, and Durham is a very important play in the scheme because it really does a good job of countering the main ways that they are gonna try to defend you. Okay, so as we talked about, one of the best strategies for defending this formation in general is gonna basically be to blitz you, right? To send five and try to get some pressure. This is where the play dagger is gonna be coming into, into focus for us because this play is going to allow us to block the majority of blitzes from dollar or six one and we're going to put a ton of stress on where the blitz is coming from, all the while keeping the same look that we have from Durham and from double corner out of corner strike. So the setup for this play, and I'm just going to first and foremost set up kind of the main blitz. So this right here is probably, if you were to ask me, the most bang for your buck, toughest defense to beat in this formation because it's hard to threaten that left side flat because of we have four receivers to the right side. So this is probably my favorite defense to play if I'm playing bunch strong because I think this gives me the best chance because I'm going to send five, we're going to have good pressure, and I'm going to be able to essentially take away a lot of the main plays. It's going to do a good job against Durham for a second. It's going to do a good job against Double Corner for a second. So what we want to do is have a play that counters that, and the main reason that this is going to counter it is because we can block our running back. So the only setup for this play is we are going to crosser, slot apprentice crosser, our slot receiver. And then if you're playing dollar, what I recommend from a pass protection perspective is slide to the right, and we're going to ID the slot corner on the left side. So essentially you'll see right here that if they run this A-gap pressure, a lot of times it's going to pick this up, and it's going to give us time to throw this crosser, which is going to get over the top of not only hard flat zones, but that crosser, another, I said, like I said, another one of the things that people like to do here, which I think is a really good adjustment, would be basically to, so as you see here, basically cover two, that right-hand side. So all we do, same pass pro. So now they're playing cover two on the left side. Well, look at this fade. This fade could be quick thrown against that cover two coverage a lot of times. Right, Larry Wilson played out of his mind there, but a lot of times that can be quick thrown. We'll show you a couple other things that, but even more importantly, and what is what I'm about to show you. So, this cro uh, the slot apprentice post will not always get over the top of that cloud on that left side, but the slot apprentice crosser is going to do a really good job. Let's see if I can look at these sheds. So I'm not going to send everybody because they're going to shed like crazy and it's going to kind of mess up the, the thing. 
trust me, you're going to have time in the pocket on this. I've tested this. So we're just going to, for the purpose of this, I just want to show you the coverage and how we can manipulate this coverage. So, again, assuming we're able to block the blitz, which this pass pro does block it, it's just we're getting crazy sheds in practice mode. You can throw this over the cloud on that corner right there. Really, really valuable because now they can't really play that defense to defend you. So another way that this defense is going to be stressed, if we go back to this main, like, send five style, is we are putting a lot of stress in the middle of the field. We have three receivers running into the middle of the field here. So what you'll see, and this time I'll be able to show it, is we're going to have a very quick read. So all we have to do is, if you, if you ask me what my progressions are, I'm looking to the crosser, or I'm looking to the, the, the streak, to the crosser, to the drag, to the dig. So like streak, no. Crosser, there's a guy in that space, but I can throw that check down right there. And that drag is a really, really important route to be able to throw. Because what that drag is going to do is that drag is going to really manipulate this underneath yellow. Okay, now I'm shading underneath on the yellow, which is the best way to run this. So keep that in mind. But a lot, of, if you wait, if you can wait just a second here, and I'll wait, see how that yellow will leave him. And then you can throw this and get some easy yards against the blitz. Now, the other thing you can do, which is important to note, Oops, this. Okay. So the other thing that you can do here with the shaded down yellow is the shaded down yellow is going to run or jump into the, the space in which the drag is attacking. So if we wait long enough, another thing we can do is we can throw that crosser. Now, right there, I just got shedded. You know, it is what it is. But if you have some time, this... Um, this shaded down yellow will basically vacate, and you'll be able to throw this. Let's see if I can do it here. Like right in there. Does that should catch it? So that's another little element about this play um, that is really, really important to discuss. Now, we talked about how this is really good. It's going to put a lot of stress on their user, and ultimately what's going to happen is their user – is going to run with the crossing route. Okay, he's going to run with the post. He's going to run with the crossing route. That's kind of what we're pushing, especially when he sees the running back blocked. So he runs with the crosser, and then that's going to leave this tight end kind of right in this little pocket to be able to be thrown. And if you look at dagger as a concept and what it does well, we are crossing the field and we're high-lowing the left side of the screen. So the corner strike combo high loaded the right side of the screen. The, the Durham combo, to a degree, kind of high loads the middle of the screen. It does do, it also does, to a degree, create high low on the left. And then this play right here is going to do a really good job of high lowing the left hand side of the screen with a backside high low in the middle. So these plays literally all work together in tandem to allow us to attack every space that is on the field, which is super, super important. So those are the three main, like, you got to know them plays. I'm going to be going over what I would consider a constraint play that I do think is worth going over in this formation that's going to do a really good job of attacking if they start to man up certain players this is a great play to, to, to learn okay so the next play that we're going to be going over is the play flood at a bunch strong offset and this play is really effective for a couple of different reasons obviously you have this super deep corner out to the tight end you have a deep dig on a back side and you have this fade to the outside bunch receiver this fade to the outside bunch receiver is super super important because I talked about this, and we're, let me actually grab the coverage. We talked about one of the ways in which they could actually defend us decently would be to utilize a cover three cloud defense. What you're going to see here is because we have this fade, even though we're to the wide side, 
you're going to see that this clear out fade is going to do a really good job of getting that tight end open to the corner. So I'm not going to be able to run. Like, it doesn't matter if I put that guy on the right in a cloud. This outside third, because he's from the safety position and because I have this fade, he has to respect that fade. And then, as you see, as I get crazy shedded, but you see the guy's wide open. Okay, and let me show it to you with a backed off cloud. It doesn't matter. I'll try to show it to you again here. Now you see, super laser. Okay. So again, we talk about like their user, and the only setup I have for this is just drag the solo. So what is this going to do to their user? It's going to inevitably pull him out of the middle of the field. So the User has to go to that tight end. He goes that tight end. We check down right there. Really, really simple reads. Really, really simple reads. Okay? So that's why we run that play. A little side note. If you're ever getting cover two, you can flip the play to the short side of the field. Streak either the slot or the tight end. And now this glitchy fade can be free-formed to the other side and I will say on I will say with the universal coverage and the KOs and stuff, it's a little bit more difficult, as you saw Larry Wilson go crazy there. But I will but but you can still throw this 100 percent You just gotta have to you just gotta have to really freeform it to the left side. What do you see here? Kind of freeform it super far to the left side. I gotta get it out a little bit more over my player. We're gonna land this throw for you guys because this is a really, really powerful throw. So again, let me go Tampa two. Let me flip the play. And if you wanted to, you could do this. 100% could do something like this as well. And now you see here, see how I can kind of, oh, man, Larry Wilson is going crazy on that play. Okay, if that's happening to you, another thing you can, actually, I want to try to, I, I know there's a, you got to be able to throw this. So the way that I would also run this, by the way, is I'd probably corner route the slot and then I'd streak this guy. The reason I would do that is because, the corner route's going to uh, give you a, a ability to be able to attack them if they're not Maybelline. There you see, there he sucks in, I throw out. That's more like what we want to see. Okay, so one for four, really good success rate. Let me show it to you one more time just so you can see the idea. What you're looking for here is your, you know, the corner route is not important, okay? Um, it's just the streak to the tight end that's important. What you're looking for is for the safety to kind of go inside to the corner, and then once he does go inside to the corner, that's where you want to throw. That's where you want to throw your um, your other route, uh, and you can put the slot on the corner too. If I was, you know, you could also do that. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Just flip again, and just for the sake of the, the of the breakdown here, I'm going to try to not get screamed at, but you can streak the slot too. And sometimes the slot's better because he's going to get up there a little faster. See how he's all the way over there? Ah, I got to get a little better at freeform. Good old freeform's kicking my butt right now. But it's a really, really good route. Um, <laughs> and you could do it. I'll show you some other. I mean, there's some little things with this. But in general, all you really need to do, if you're ever playing like 6-1 and they're just double mabling over and over again, this would be why you would do this. You see, really get it to the left. And you see there. Worst, typically, worst case scenario in game is they KO it. Typically, worst, ca worst case scenario in game is that they KO the, the route. Okay? But feel free to use this. Feel free to not. You don't have to. Um, this is something that's a little more high risk, probably high reward. And you see there, we get a little bit better space. And as you see, that's normally what's going to occur. Okay. So... That's one setup of the play flood. Now, another thing we didn't talk through yet, uh, let me actually get back in dollar, but it, it manipulates cover through cloud, which is really, really important. So the, the main defense that we have to be able to, like we have to be equipped to be able to attack because it's the defense that's going to give us the most trouble is going to be this defense I was showing you that it was like if I was, you know, best bang for my buck is going to be this right here with a yellow and, and basically this. OK, so essentially they're putting a lot of energy into their user, taking away these four routes to the right. Right. Which is which is hard to truly it's hard to it's hard to beat this. Well, again, same idea here. 
if we block for five seconds, this is this is dotted. So with flood, you can block your running back. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide right, block this way, drag this guy. And then what I like to do with this play is we're going to actually attack it with the double corner like this. And essentially, this is kind of what I was talking about a little bit before, but the tight end will be open. I got shedded again, but the tight end will be open on the right-hand side if they blitz that. So just want to kind of illustrate that. So in the main purpose of this is let's say they man this guy up. Let's say I'm going to not blitz here, but I just want you to see. I'm actually going to put them both in hard flats because that's going to be more like what the coverage would look like. But essentially, even if they – press circle into the dirt here you're going to see this tight end corner is going to get open to the sideline okay really important wanted to co cover that because if they are if they are doing that man up adjustment you want to have something like this play flood okay this play flood also does a really good job against zone drops a lot for a lot of the same reasons that the double corner play did good now one thing i'll do from time to time and i i don't do this a ton but I like to take advantage of, so like let's say they're doing the cloud flat on the right here. I like to take advantage of this because we have a, good, a nice quick snap play here. So all we're going to do is just slide right, snap the ball quick. And then you're going to see that my tight end corner, it's crazy how much I'm getting shut in this little video here. But basically this tight end corner is going to be really hard to guard. Let me see. Cover four is not going to guard it. Of course, I say that and he guards it because I, got, I didn't freeform it. <laughs> we'll show with hard flats this time just, just to kind of illustrate this. But freeform this down and outside. You want to catch on the sideline. If you catch on the sideline, they will catch the ball. Okay. So oftentimes what happens, and this is where like master tactician, you can slide right, drag this guy, snap the ball. So they're going to run with the tight end a lot of times once they just recognize that's what you're running here, and that's where you can throw that and be able to get some really easy yards for your offense. So we've covered corner strike. We've covered uh, flood. We've covered Durham. And now we're going to talk about how to attack the blitzing defense. So as I said, so there's a couple ways to do this. The best way, in my opinion, to attack the blitz in Madden 20 four is to utilize rpo so if the users here if you just kind of look at this play this rpo is going to do a really good job against this and so if i start to see that blitz me a lot i'll throw this and notice that that hard flat will suck inside for just a second that simple suction of the hard flat inside to go defend the art to go defend the run is really all the space you need to throw this rpo so again if I want to beat the blitz, a lot of times I'll just throw this and I'll try to juke this guy. And oftentimes I will be able to, and this will be a very easy, like quick, quick hitting play. Now this isn't the only way that we're going to have to beat this blitz, but I wanted to cover this. So again, how do they stop the RPO? They stop the RPO by manning up circle, right? So you kind of see why this is really good. Now, if they have a cloud out there, that's one thing. But if they just have this, like, cover three base, a lot of times you can throw this out here and you can get a block, and this is a really good run, really good play. Now, to mention, you know, you have a look like dollar, you can run on dollar a lot of times as well. So I didn't want to leave out the RPO. It's actually one of the best tactics for uh, – let me cover that real quick. Let's say you're playing – uh, hopefully I have it. Yeah, 6-1. Perfect. Let's say you are playing someone that's running 6-1. Well, their main version of this would be to hard flat here, like the same defense I was just showing you, just at a 6-1. Okay? So they're going to do you a pretty good job at stopping the run here. But this linebacker, if he's not manned up on circle, he ain't ever going to get out there. And this is an easy, easy read, easy big play. So the basic read here is we're just looking at circle. If there's a defender in that area, we're not going to throw the ball. But most of the time there won't be if they're blitzing you. And this is a really simple and effective way to attack that, you know, kind of zone blitz method that people are going to throw at you.
the next play that we're going to be covering, and this is going to be really good for the blitz, and it's going to really start to kind of hopefully show you how we can start to attack some stuff. It's going to be the play Y Trail. So if we look at Y Trail, this play is generally a man beating play. So like if you are getting a lot of man coverage, like cover one robber, for example, and low key this cover and robber is going to hum because it has that nice blitz angle. You're just going to run it like this. This will be majority of man coverage as you play because the running back wheel is really good against man coverage this year. Now, not only that, but to defend the running back wheel, you're going to need deep halves. So if they leave this guy in a half, then what's going to be your read here is going to be your post. So see your trail. Bottleneck kind of went crazy there. But a lot of times your post is going to be open. If your post is not open, your your drag or your tight end route will be open. So this just gives you four man beating routes on one play, which is really normally all you need to beat man. As you see there, tight end drag open or tight end trail route open. But what I want to use wide trail uh, to kind of go over with, with us is a really nice way in which we can beat the blitz quickly and succinctly. So this play is going to do a really good job of beating kind of that send five cover four uh, or send, send five like cover three dropping that yellow in. And the reason why I'm going to show you is because, again, and hopefully you guessed it, we can block our running back. So what I like to do with this play is we will streak the slot receiver, block the running back, slide right, and then we'll block. Okay. And what you'll see here is it's going to put a lot of stress on that yellow. And as you see, the drag is going to get open. Now, the drag is not the only thing to get open because if you think about it, where does the yellow come from? And this is really important for Madden. This yellow comes from the top of the screen, right? So at best, this is kind of what you're going to get in terms of a look. And so if we can hold the ball for just a split second, this streak is going to affect that middle third. So what we're looking for really is we're looking for this throw right in between the seams. Super good way to be able to manipulate this blitz concept because it's going to happen relatively quickly. Now, there are some other ways that we can do, we can accomplish this with motion, which we will get into. But in general, this is one of my favorite methods for attacking kind of this coverage. So now let's say they leave that, that quarter, right? They leave that quarter there. Again, all we do is streak R1, block the running back so that we have protection here. And you see our drag now gets super open right in the middle of the field. So now they're kind of cooked because there's no real way in which they can defend this, everything you have here. Because this, this stuff to the right side is going to hold the user. The user is almost always going to stay over here to the right side in, against this formation. They're normally not going to cross the formation, especially if they're throwing that guy in a, in a yellow zone. And if they're not throwing this guy in a yellow zone, you know, like let's say they're playing like this, then that, that drag from double corner is going to kill them. Okay? Normally it's going to be this right here and the user is going to step to the right. So again, let me kind of illustrate the throw that I really want you to look at trying to make here is, is really this kind of like right there. That's the throw. That's the throw that if you make, if you can learn how to make that throw, it will take your offense in this formation to a, a whole nother level. It's very difficult for them to user that post from just from where they're at and from where that post gets thrown. Now, that being said, there are other ways in which we can still utilize this post and run this play. One of my favorites, if we want to send five out, is we're going to drag our tight end, we're going to Texas route our running back, and we're going to flat this outside guy. So this is a little bit of a cover two beater, which we can get into in a minute. The main thing here is their user is almost, almost guarantee you is going to sit on the running back. 
So because he's going to sit on the running back here, this becomes open again, as you see. You don't even need a third. You don't even really need a, a clear out for this, this route to work well, especially if they're sending everybody. And so what this does is it just creates, again, and hopefully you're kind of getting the idea here, creates another high-low. Where's the high-low? Who's the conflict defender? Well, the conflict defender is really that safety on the left side and that linebacker in the middle field. Those are the main players we're trying to put in, put in conflict here. So something very basic, I mean very, very simple, like this. What this does, if you look here to the right side, this flat is going to pull out the flat zone. So if I wanted to, I could throw this in that window. Now that's a really hard throw, and you see why we don't make that throw. Right? You see why we don't make that throw. So keep that in mind as well. You know, but it is something you could do. Now, now let's say you're starting to get a lot of this, double flatting. A couple ways to beat double flat, but one of the best is this combo right here. Okay? If you think about why the Texas route is going to pull that deep half, and then you're going to have this split the halves, and you're going to have a wide open big hitter. So these are some of our mainstay setups from Bunch Strong. Now the ultimate way that we're going to attack this base blitz that almost everybody that knows what they're doing is going to do to you if you're running this formation is we're going to run tight slots, right? This is why we're in bears. So what you'll see is I'm going to audible to some of my tight so slots plays. The first play we're going to break down is mesh spot. And what we're going to do is we're going to streak our left side receiver. We're going to corner route our slot. And then you can either block your running back or put him on a route. I like to block him oftentimes in tight slots. It's really easy to pick up this left side A gap. And then you see that this just absolutely destroys that coverage. Why does it destroy that coverage? Because this is basically the play flood. And we'll talk about the adjustments they can make to this in just a moment because they are going to be able to make some. But in general, this is kind of the base play. This is the base defense we push, we push them to run in our main formation. So we want to be able to beat that in our secondary formations. We go to mesh spot. We streak the left side. We corner route. And then we block this guy. And we're already set up, ready to go. And the main thing we're looking for here, as I get screamed at, Practice mode is insane. Um, the main thing we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the, the corner route. Okay, and, and why are we looking for the corner route? Because we are anticipating that they're in that coverage right there to the left side. And baseline, uh, the other kind of sad truth about baseline press dollar, baseline press dollar is not going to be able to stop this corner route very well, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But you see here, that's the throw you're wanting to try to hit right there. That, that corner route on that corner super good and this is why again we come out with our bunch to the wide side of the field we f we come into tight slots and now we're in a, a compressed set with that strength of that formation being to the short side of the field it's very very good for baseline and pressed dollar now if they wanted to they could do something like this which i have seen this where you're wanting to essentially run cover two on this left side and again, oftentimes, just based off the way blitzes work in this game, they're going to be using on that left side. Well, this corner route is still going to be able to clear. Look at that shed. Gosh, these sheds. That corner route is still going to be able to clear the cloud. And the way we'll illustrate that is by not blitzing everybody on the team. But I just want you to kind of like mentally get a picture of, of how this works. So... You know, they put a cloud there on the left side, but they can't back him up because we audibled. As I think that was Kyle Pitts. That's why you get super tall players if you want to play zone. But that that route is is the money route. It's the route. Just a simple slot apprentice corner route. And you can do this in 25. We have route stems. You don't even need hot route master anymore to create corner routes. You see, there he is. That's that's who you want to hit. So that's our number one play because it really does – you just can't play a lot of the main stuff you want to be able to play with when you, when you start to get into those tight slots. Okay? 
Now, I'm going to be showing these plays as audibles just because I think it makes the most sense. So, like, if they're playing, like, base press cover four, which is very popular against Punch Strong, you go to that mesh spot with the streak corner. And then if you want to table out the running back, be my guest, okay? But what this does is it really just high lows that sideline, but it high lows it super fast, whereas in our other setups, we weren't able to really do that, okay? So the next setup we're going to be going over is kind of uh, essentially a, another play that we're going to utilize and another mainstay play, and this one's going to be post-wheel drag. So the setup for this is going to be streak the right side receiver, corner out the tight end, drag the slot receiver, and then we're going to streak the running back. This is really good for man coverage. It's really good for zone coverage. Now, why is this good against zone? Again, we're using this short corner route to the tight end. What this short corner route is going to do is it's going to allow you to throw this if they don't have a cloud flat. So you see here, I can throw that right to the corner. And that was cover four drop. Cover four drop being probably, in my opinion, the best way to defend this. It's not going to be able to. So now if I was to put a cloud from my slot corner, which is kind of, again, back to that double corner, if I put a cloud there, you see he plays pretty good. But guess what? I can just check down in my drag route, and now I'm creating a lot of conflict on that right side. Whereas the last play, I created a lot of conflict on the left. Now I'm able to create a significant amount of conflict on the right side. Another one of my favorite uh, things to do with this post-wheel drag setup, if we think about what it's equipped to be able to attack, this post-wheel drag setup is going to do a really good job of attacking different ways that people like to blitz tight slots. So if you think about how people like to blitz tight slots, what most people are going to try to do when they send pressure at you is they're going to probably play cover two here to the left side, and then they're going to play some variation. If they send pressure like, let's say they send like DB fire type pressure, then oftentimes they might even switch over to this guy. So it's going to look something like this. So the reason this is so well equipped to be able to attack that, that blitz is because this tight end corner can be thrown right in the seam super quick, as you can see. So this tight end corner is, is extremely valuable just in terms of the power of this play, the overarching power of the play. And so also they're using here. So a lot of times what are they going to do? They're just going to take the closest receiver to their user, which is the tight end. So because they're going to take the closest defender to their user, which is the tight end, this is where this post route, you have that clear out streak. You're just going to pass it down inside, possession catch it in front of the KO. Very simple, very effective, very good method for attacking those coverages. Okay? So those are the main reasons why post wheel drag is so, so effective. Now, another thing that we didn't get to yet, what I did want to show is, is again, pressed. So the press is, if they are pressed on that right side, the other thing you want to look for here is, th is this tight end can sometimes clear a cloud. So see how it kind of gets in that real soft spot right over the top of the cloud and, and to the outside of the quarter? Pretty hard throw to make, but really effective. Now, uh, another thing that I did want to get into is one of the things that they will start to do is they will basically user this left side and they're going to go take corner routes themselves, okay? So the running back streak is going to do a really good job on this play of holding the user in the middle of the field. And so because the running back streak is going to kind of hold them in the middle of the field and they're playing cover to the right, they're going to be able to stop the tight end. But this post is going to get into a super soft spot right underneath. Or, or Essentially, they're not going to be able to play cover two. And we'll show this a little bit better here. Again, the D linemen are really kind of messing everything up. So I'm going to spy them. But post will drag. Now you see here. Watch this post. You see... See how it kind of clears everything? And that'll clear a 30-yard cloud if they're Maybelline. It's a very good play. So hypothetically, let's say the user decides, okay, I'm going to run with that post out of post will drag. 
okay, you can run with the post all you want. This running back streak, you'll see here, is going to be able to be thrown kind of right in that little pocket, and you want to possession catch that against the coverage. Which leads me to my next setup, which is really good. I want to go back to that kind of blitz beating aspect of this formation. Uh, this, this next setup is going to be really good for attacking basically any kind of send five out of dollar that they want to do. Okay, So the first rendition of it is going to be with the shaded down yellow. And the setup or the play is going to be, whoops, four verticals. Okay, so the way that we're going to set this up is we're just going to streak the running back. We're going to slot a press post the slot receiver. We're going to hitch this right side guy. It's really good horizontal stretches. And our first read is always this flat to the left side. So you see, look out there. Okay, he backs up. We throw the flat, and we just take what the defense gives us. So now what do they have to do to defend this? Well, on the left side, they're going to have to have a flat zone, which is going to lead them into a cover two coverage. That's not going to be able to stop the flood. But let's say, okay, their user, and I'll just illustrate that by manning up the running back with my user, their user is going to go to the right side. Or I'm sorry, the left side. So, so you see here, yes, the running back would be the next read. Normally he'd be open, but just kind of anticipating how they would user this. They know the hole is the left side. So they're going to run to the left side. So what that leaves open is this hitch on the right side. Okay? Super, super good. If they're wanting to run a lot of cover two, which ultimately I would, I would assume you're going to get a lot of cover two to the right side, especially if they start to figure out that they can put this vertical hook here and he will stop a lot of the quick throws we have. So you're going to start to get this kind of coverage where they're going to user this – you know, it basically looks something like what you see here. And again, there this is assuming they have really good adjustments after you audible, right, to a formation because it's hard to adjust to a formation. But in general, it would look something like what you see on your screen with the cloud and the vert hook. So we just need something that's going to manipulate cover two while still keeping the user to the left side, which is why I have the play bench and the audibles. So it's a play bench. All we're going to do, streak the tight end. And then on the left side here, couple different things. I think this is the easiest way to run it. We're going to drag the slot, flat the outside guy, and streak the running back. Now, the reason I run it like this is because it puts the user in conflict to the left side. If they don't have a hard, our first read is always going to be this quick flat here. So if they're not playing flats, we can just take advantage of that and just take that simple quick throw, quick flat read. Very, very good. Okay. So then now if you think about it, okay, so they, they're going to have to play kind of that cover two to that right side. And now if we're, if we're thinking about pressure and blitzes and all this stuff, they're going to have to have a really good user to the left uh, to kind of defend everything. But let's just say they are able to, you know, maybe you're playing like literally the best Madden player in the world, and they're going to be able to use her that right side pretty good. So what I would do here, again, we just need a little bit of time here. But once that corner cuts to the corner, just throw that out there. You see that clears that cloud. And now they can't really run cover two on you to that right-hand side. Now, if you needed more protection, like let's say you did, you know, you're watching this, maybe, you know, you want to be a little bit more safe in your passing and you just want some good combos, you know, that are going to, gonna you can block somebody and, and, and essentially still get to what you want. So go to bench. The main thing here is this right side concept because that's going to kill cover two. And then we just need stuff to the left side. So something very, very simple that nobody does that you could totally do is just hitch or curl the left side guy and block the running back. This is going to give you really good protection against a lot of pressures. Your flat will kind of pick up any kind of blitz, and then he'll release late. And then as you see there, the corner route's wide open. We threw the ball into the stands, but it's literally wide open. So that's another kind of play that we like to go to situationally to take advantage of specific things that our opponent is doing, which does lead me to another point about the play bench we didn't get to yet, and that is you can just fade the slot, and essentially you have the play mesh spot, except now the corner route's going from the outside guy, as you see. That's just if they start to cross man or start to – really try to key in on your slot receiver in the formation, this is really good. 
Now, I haven't even, we're literally almost an hour into the ebook, and I haven't even gotten into the bombs. So I did want to cover a couple bombs here. The first one is going to be out of Bunch Strong, and I actually really like this setup. It's at a wide trail. What you're going to do is you're going to basically do this combo right here. So essentially, you just don't want any vertical route running to the right side of the screen. A lot of times will happen now, you are going to need a significant amount of time where this post will cross the face of the safety. He actually totally stopped running there, which is unfortunate. We'll show that again. It's a little better against cover three than against cover four. And we also have not gotten into the five wide bunch strong, which I do think is worth talking about. You can block your running back for this, by the way, too. But you're basically just, once he crosses right there, see how I'm able to throw it in stride? And a lot of times, I'm going to get a rat catch. We know the rat catch animations were really good this year, and you're going to be able to basically bomb them. All right, so cover three. And again, you are going to need a lot of time. You're going to need some time for this, okay? You go wide trail. And this bomb, all this also will manipulate cover two, I'm pretty sure, and I'll, I'll cover that in a minute, but... You see right there, you're really just trying to kind of split the seam. Honestly, one other thing I did want to say, it's not a good bomb for non-pressed defenses. Like they kind of need to be pressed in their cover three. If they're not pressed in their cover three, if they're playing backed off coverage, then it's not going to be as effective. But you see here, like against press cover three, there's this little window, and we're not even able to hit it in practice mode. But I'm telling you, in game, that post, it can it can beat cover three, okay? Very similar to how it beat cover two. Try to show it one more time. Cover three. Go to wide trail. And this is not something you – this is something you, like – you don't want to call your bomb every play, right? You want to call it very situationally, but that's what you're looking for, okay? So I only call that maybe once or twice a game. Now, the next bomb is really cool because it's out of the play mesh spot in our audible over to tight slots. So we know that essentially when you run tight slots, you're going to get a lot of cover four, cover, th cover two, but if they do run cover three, you know, let's say they try to Mabel here on the left side. This is really good. So they try to, like, kind of, like, put, like, a – they try to put, like, a 20-yard a purple to guard flood. If they do that um, – and this will bomb a, cover th a third or a quarter. All you're going to do is you're going to go to mesh spot. You're going to – I like the smart route post. You don't have to. Streak the tight end. And then the same basic concept applies – where you know we're just going to have no vertical routes on the left side. So we're going to keep that third down. And you see how fast that happens? That actually occurs super fast against that coverage. It's really good against cover three. It's not as good against cover four, um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure cover four, because of the inside quarter, is going to do a little bit better of a job. So keep that in mind. We'll go again here. Whoops, I accidentally ran commit. Cover four drop. So streak the tight end. The right side, that's the main stuff. You don't have to block the running back either. Uh, you or you don't have to put the running back out on a route. You can block him. Here's cover four. And you see, like, it's not super good against cover four. It takes a lot longer to develop. The one thing I will say that I have found against cover four, though, that is important to showcase, and this is specifically a pressed cover four. Okay, that's like super important. But you, there's a little window, you'll see right there, where you can kind of throw that like you were doing wide trail. So there's a little window against cover four that you can hit. So if you can't run cover four, if you can't run cover three, you know, then they're going to ultimately start to have to run Mabel coverage. Last couple things I wanted to cover is some situational stuff that is a little different Madden than Madden. So I kind of saved it for the end. 
let's just talk briefly about man coverage. Tight slots has historically been one of the best man beating formations in the game every year. The play mesh spot, flat the slot or the outside guy, um, out route the tight end, slant the slot. This combo is really good against man because it's really hard to essentially get the running back. The running back will be open almost every time. It's hard to cover the. It's hard to use with the running back wheel. If they do, and I'm in cover two man, so I have the deep halves. Even if they do cover the the running back wheel, now you got to deal with the slant route. And this slant route specifically is really good. It's one of the better slants on the game just because of the way it runs. And I'll show you some other really underrated combos out of tight slots that a lot of people are sleeping on this this year in particular. But essentially here you'll see, as long as we get time in the pocket, the slant will get open. The slant, if <laughs> this this has been the worst slant year ever. So that's also kind of important going forward. Like, you might just want to use a drag route, just the way the game is played this year. But most of the time, a slant is better. He keeps bumping. Oh, my gosh. He keeps – that's so dumb. Kyle Pitts is not even a good man corner. The fact that Kyle Pitts is a corner <laughs> is kind of funny. But anyway, let me try to get this one more time for you. As if – Man coverage, it, it's just the bumping that's honestly the, the hardest part to deal with is, is the bumping. It truly is. So that's what makes man coverage good on next gen is just the random bumping. But as you see right there, I mean, that's what normally happens any Madden. I mean, that's, that's the normal thing that's going to occur. So the next thing I wanted to cover uh, that I do think is really important is if we get up in a lot of cover for or we are getting a lot of man, this is really, really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to tight slots, and I don't really care what play you call. You can pretty much do it out of every single play. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a slant post combo. Now, a couple different ways to get to this based off your hot route abilities, but my favorite preferred way to do this would be to slant that slot receiver. I think that's the best receiver to put on a slant route in this formation. Streak the left side receiver, any either one on the right on the on the post. Now in this case, we'll put the tight end on the post and we'll flat that outside receiver and we'll put our running back to the flat. So we have two quick flat reads if they do blitz us, and then we have our slant and we have our post. This simple route combo is one of the best route combos every single year. Now the reason we want to run our slant from the short side of the field and our post from the wide side of the field is because we are in a compressed formation, if they decide to run zone, this is going to give us a high-low read between our running back table route and our tight end post. So you see here, that flat gets pulled, and this is wide open. Something very simple, like slant post, you need to have in your playbook. Now... Why don't we get into some five wide stuff out of our main formation? This is more supplemental stuff, but it nonetheless is really, really valuable. So one of my favorite things to do is go five wide out of bunch strong because now we have a lot more of a threat to the left side. So the corner strike setup we're going to have here is we're just going to streak the running back, motion him out, drag the tight in, and then we are going to corner route the right side guy, or streak him. That's either way. Okay, I, let's streak him. So this is not even a hot route master required setup. But what we're doing now is we're creating a high-low read on the left. We have our deep C route, which is going to get open with the clear out from the running back. We have, and then we have our tight end. So let's say they play, you know, cover two. This to me is really good for cover two because we have these seams and then that C route actually gets over the top of a press cloud flat. So it's a super, like, I don't call it a ton, but it's really, really good. The next setup I'm going to go over is really for that main kind of blitzing strategy that a lot of people like to do. 
So if we're getting a lot of pressure here off this left side, and you still want to kind of be able to run some of your main offenses, main things you want to try to run here, I'll go to this five wide because it allows us to really stretch the field in, in, a, in a little bit of a different way. So what I'm going to do is we're going to really isolate kind of that left side safety, left side corner, if this is the adjustment we're getting a lot. So what I like to do here is we're going to go double corner, and we're just going to take the running back, and we're going to put him on, we're going to motion him out, we're going to put him on a flat, put the outside receiver on a drag, and then we're going to run our double corner. So our first read, our main read is this flat route to the left side. So we're looking at that corner and saying, does that corner bail? So we look out there, we see he bails, we throw it to the running back, and we now force them to have to defend the immediate flat and the immediate yellow zone. Super important. Because now, let's say this corner does not bail. And you get a coverage like this on that left side. Well, when I look out there, I say, okay, the corner did not bail. So now I want to look to the drag. So I look out there, corner sits, drags open right there. And you see that we're able to quick dot one of the better blitzing concepts in the entire game and one of the best coverage concepts for our offense. All the while, and this is super important, so what do they have to do to defend us? They have to basically play this and send five or send four now. Well, they can't send their five that they were sending to get super good pressure. So once we get up into this, now our short corner, we have plenty of time for this to open up. So you see here, plenty of time. This opens up, and we throw an easy laser against a really good defense. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of one of the most common ways people like to adjust when we motion out the running back. And that is they're going to man up the running back, and then they're going to basically have an outside zone for the C route. So it would look something like, and let's do this out of a blitz look. So, you know, let's say they're blitzing us like so, and then they get a cross man right in here, right? So, again, these are little variations on our main stuff, but they're really important to know. So, it, it, and really, I mean, you can go back and do it like this as well. That's fine. But just something simple like this. Why is this good? We have an immediate seam threat they have to account for. If they don't, that's going to be open. And then that's oftentimes going to clear that yellow. So if we go back to the hook curl example. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you see how we have this hook curl right here to the left? So let's say that that hook curl is not manned up to the running back, but it's just a shaded underneath hook curl. You'll see here, it kind of pulls that yellow for long enough where we can just dump it down to our to our left side player. The only other main play that I want to go over in terms of five wide bunch strong, uh, there's probably two more actually, is Durham. We're going to motion this guy out. We're going to drag him, and we're just going to post this guy. So this is really good, really well-spaced combo. And what this allows us to do is where's the user going to lurk? Oftentimes, because the running back is no longer a threat, they're going to lurk the slot receiver. Well, this tight end gets up into that seam area, and this is another way in which we can kind of get to attacking that seam area, which, again, we're going to pull their user. So their user is going to have to worry more about this left side, but we're going to be able to still attack them on the right side. Okay, super good. So again, super simple here. but And then this is also really good for man. So like if they're running a lot of man coverage, this is normally pretty good. It's essentially just slant post. It's just drag post. You can run slant post if you want to run this as a slant. You know, something like this here. You can run just traditional slant post. And oftentimes your post is going to be open. 
The only other play that I wanted to cover is wide trail out of five wide look. So we're gonna motion the wheel of running back, motion him out. And then you can leave it like this, or if you notice that this corner on the right side is not pressed, I like to flip it, or I like to invert it and put the slot on the drag, but they get on the corner. Best cover two man beater in the game, because this post, if he beats his man, it's a touchdown. So this is really good for the bottleneck meta, and I mean, really just good for, in, in general, some of the things you're going to see, so... If they're running cover to Mabel, this is really good. Um, let me do. Oops. Sometimes this running back can actually get open, and then you still have kind of that drag trail. But if I ever really need to beat man coverage, this is uh, one of my favorite plays to go to. So that is kind of the main setups. Now, of course, you can go. I, I did want to break this down. So, like, if you are, if you didn't know, you can audible to a screenplay with Master Tactician. I can't do it in, in practice mode, though. And you can essentially hot route the running back, and then you can hot route everybody else. So what I would do is you have, see how I have this fade here? So now I can just instantly roll out, and I can potentially throw that fade. What I would probably do if I was, like, actually, you know, running this in a game, which I really honestly haven't. I've just done it from the same concept from other formations. What I would probably do here is I'd probably corner route one of these guys on the right-hand side, right? And if you want to just run the screen, I mean, just run the screen. Screen's good, too. But this bunch wide is really underrated this year. A lot of people are kind of sleeping on this formation because it has a lot of other little things. So another thing it has is branch return which is ran pretty much exactly like smash return you could run it like this and this is essentially smash return and so you just have all these high low reads really simple so that is kind of the main formation that's kind of like the main stuff now let's talk about the red zone not a ton here the the one the main formation is this trips formation so the first thing i like to do is i like to just see if they can guard this little swing pass um in terms of your free form you don't want to free form it up because you see what happens so what i like to do is i just i don't even free form it i just throw it like kind of sounds a little bodish but this is really good like for you know baseline press type of defenses this is normally pretty good and you're just looking out there. Do, is he open? Throw it. If not, throw it away. Right? But get your running back in space. Give him a chance to score. That's one thing you can do. Um, a lot of people are shifting to man-to-man -to -man down here. So this is where, you know, kind of mesh spot type combo where we're going to go with something like this. Pretty good little red zone combo here. And you're really mainly looking for that, that slant. Right, we talked about that against man. But the main defense that you're going to see in in the red zone, which is why the swing pass is actually really good, is you're going to see baseline baseline six one. So a couple ways that we can attack it. The first one that I like is just the RPO screen. Right, try to like six one normally just doesn't. It just doesn't do a good job against it. Now, the way that most people are going to run 6-1 is they're going to run with vertical hooks, hard flats, and purples like this. So the best way to attack this coverage is my favorite red zone play, which is to streak the slot, post the tight end. You want to smart route the tight end and the corner, wheel the running back, and then drag. So what we're really looking for is we're off rip, we're looking for this streak. If that's not there, we're looking for that tight end post or the corner. And, and and I believe that this, the coverage I'm showing you here is very much so probably the best red zone coverage in the game. Now, you have to understand, the user is going to be down here, and oftentimes the user is going to kind of lurk over the middle. So oftentimes, you know, the user might go with the tight end. You know, he might go with the drag. 
There's a couple different ways they could lurk it. So what I'm trying to say here is this throw is there for you if they run that coverage. And you do want to look there. It's a tight window, but look there, and if you have space, throw it. You know what I mean? Now, if they're running, you know, essentially just a simple simple shade down cover four, this is where this wheel route, as I get absolutely screamed at, um, this is where this wheel route is really good. So what the wheel route's purpose is on the play is he's going to pull every deep zone to him, and you can throw this right there. I throw this all the time for touchdowns down here in the red zone. So you have that play as well. Uh, you also can audible into trips. So one of my favorite things to do is go to dig return, take that slot, slot in front of post. We're going to motion this guy. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. We're going to motion the solo receiver inside, put him on a hitch, and essentially you have dig return. We know how good dig return is at a bunch, and you're really looking for that post in the back corner on the left side. So that's an option as well. There's some just little things. I mean, you could go to this trips formation. Notice the spacing's pretty decent. This runs really good, and you have a little bubble screen attached to it. You go with 6-1, this is really good against 6-1. So these are all different options that you have to be able to score down here in the red zone. Another underrated one, high-low dig, right? We're going to um, – I like the smart routed out route, the outside guy tight end crosser or tight end post with a smart route there. If you wanted to, you could drag or you could just motion this guy in. And now we're looking my primarily for either the post or the wig. It's basically just a spread variation of dig return. Another thing I didn't say yet that I did want to is if they are not playing hard flat on the outside. It's like I have a hard flat on the linebacker, but I don't have a hard flat on the outside guy. Just swing pass, just throw it out there, catch it, pretty good. So those are just little different tricks and tips that I use down here in the red zone. Another thing, like let's say you get down to the goal line. If you get down to the goal line here, um, I normally do like to go to wing tight stretch. Uh, I just think it's the best way to score down here. So I would just go wing wing tight stretch, and if you want to audible to sneak, you can. But essentially what I like to do here is normally stretch to the weak side is is pretty decent from what I've seen this year. So stretch is – you have you have that option. Um, if you wanted to do a rollout, you would run a play-action play. Really important. We call it play-action where I block the running back. And then what I would probably do is just, you know, basically something like this. We're just trying to get out of the pocket, roll out, you know, and throw whatever. Like, I don't really, I don't really do this in the red zone. I don't really do the rollout stuff, but you know, just run the stretch with the juke back inside. You see, we're getting four or five yards, and a lot of people are going to do pinch, crash down if they see this. This is why left side stretch is really good because you can just juke inside for about five yards. So, again, that's another. Just super, super little thing. You know, you could do essentially a rollout here to the right side. Brady's kind of slow, but you could do a rollout play if you wanted to. But, guys, I just call the stretch. I, I really, really, really recommend that. The stretch is really good. The wing tight stretch is really good this year. So, this offense, and I think you got hopefully a lot of insight into this. This offense, in my opinion, is going to be one of the better ones next year. I think it's going to be the best offense next year. If you want to get my full variation of this, we're going to be dropping it in the school on the school site, getting everybody ready for Madden 25. You can sign up for school down in the description below. Ten bucks will get you access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. Thanks for watching the video, not only for Madden but for college football as well on the school site for just ten dollars. So you get everything for just ten bucks. Link is down in the description.